Hey beautiful people, I'm Lucy and today we're talking about how to edit amazing portraits in Lightroom. Now for me, I have three main elements that I always think about when I'm editing a portrait and these just kind of keep me on track and help me focus on what's really important about a portrait. So let's get into it right away. The first thing is to make sure your model's skin tone is perfect. So everyone has different skin tones. There's literally hundreds of different shades, but the most important thing to think about is that it is true to real life and that it looks natural because that is the first thing that people notice. And when skin tones look unnatural, it's just like a dead giveaway that the editing did not go well. So this is the raw photo that I'm working with. And as you can see, I look hella pale. Like I am a very, very pale person and this might be slightly overexposed, but really like it's winter in Canada guys and I'm not going outside. I'm not getting any sun. So when the light is hitting me, like I kind of look like a ghost, like it is not good. So what we want to do is make this look a bit more flattering for me, for the subject to have a bit more of a nicer, warmer, glowy skin. So the easiest way to start fixing the skin tone is to look at your image's white balance. So right now this is very cool. So I'm just gonna slide this and I'm just gonna warm up the overall white balance of the image to begin with. Now I'm gonna just fix a few things in the exposure. So I'm gonna bring this exposure down slightly, gonna bring down the highlights, bring up the shadows a little bit and bring down the whites and maybe just bring the blacks down a little bit. And then something I always do is I'm gonna bring up the clarity and then to enhance the colors of the overall image, but also on the skin, I'm gonna bring up the vibrance and the saturation a little bit. So already with just those changes, we can see a lot more color and warmth in this image and the skin definitely looks a lot more pleasing than this ghost skin. So we have sort of a better place to start. Now, one other thing that I do with my portraits right away that also does affect how the skin kind of looks is I would work on the tone curve and I just do a very, very slight tone curve where I am bringing up the shadows a bit and bringing down those highlights. Again, this is just to even out everything, but it has a nice effect on the skin in that it evens out the tones of the colors so you get more of a consistent color tone. Now the next thing you want to focus on is retouching your image. I'm not a fan of going overboard with retouching, but I do think it's a really important part of portraits. And that's because you can take out distracting elements that don't really add anything to the photo and kind of distract your eye from the main parts. So let's look at how to do that. So the main thing for this is uh, I have some blemishes here because I was eating chocolate the night before this shoot and that's just the price you pay. So pick the heel tool there and um, you can be on heel or clone. They'll both work in this instance. Hit those little spots and they will disappear. I also have this cut on my hand that is taking forever to heal. So we will just digitally heal it. So these are, aren't major things. If you were doing any major retouching, I definitely think you should do that in Photoshop. But for quick, simple things like this, totally easy to just go use that heel or clone tool. I have another video all about retouching if you wanna check that out, I will link it up above. So I always take out those little blemishes, but sometimes we also wanna work on the under eye. Um, specifically if like the light's kind of hitting it in a weird way or maybe you just didn't sleep very well that night or your model didn't. Um, just because again, it kind of distracts from the eye. So just do that heel tool over top. You kind of will have to finesse with this a little bit for sure. But that looks really good. Um, so I put this on heel and uh, sometimes I bring the opacity down sometimes it works okay so with this you just have to really finesse and be really really careful and make sure you uh, kind of keep looking to make sure you didn't go overboard with it so you can hide those little um, pins there if you press H just so you can get a good look so that looks great so the last thing I do with retouching is I just do a very slight skin smooth over all of the skin just to make everything kind of soft and really pretty. So what I do is just grab an adjustment brush, make it as big as you can so it covers the entire area of skin. I know this sounds weird, but trust me. And then what we're gonna do is make sure you have auto mask selected and click on an area of the skin. And what it's actually gonna do if you press O key, 
shows you what it captured and it automatically picks that whole area. Everything that, that is that color, it will pick. So that works really, really well. And then what I do is I will just bring down the clarity a bit and then I bring up the sharpness just to slightly offset it. And that just makes it really easy. It's an easier way to do a mask than going in and brushing over all of the skin. It'll just automatically select it for you and make your life super easy. So once I have all that sorted out, the last thing I focus on is the eyes. And this is actually the most important part of a portrait. That's gonna be the first thing people look at and you really want them to stand out and pop, but not going into that like overboard, like creepy doll eye look. We just wanna do like a really nice natural enhanced eye. So for this, I use the adjustment brush tool and I actually make several different brushes. So right now I'm gonna go over the left eye and bring up the exposure and the shadows a little bit, just because I want to brighten up that overall area. So I'm gonna bring those whites up too. Now I'm gonna do another brush and go over the other eye. And why I'm doing these separately is just because the exposures of both the eyes are different based on where the light is. So you kind of wanna make your changes according to that. So for this one, I'm gonna bring up the exposure and the shadows and that looks really good. And of course, just press the H key to hide those pins to see what you've done. So next, I'm gonna go and make another brush. And with this brush, I'm actually gonna be covering both of the eyes at the same time. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna bring up the contrast, bring down the blacks, bring up the clarity and the sharpness because I really want the eyes to pop. I want them to be the sharpest part of this image. So that just really helps a lot. Now with the eyes, it's all about making focus and adding in some contrast so they really stand out. So I'm gonna do another little brush and just cover that top part of the eyelashes. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to bring down the black so it's a lot blacker and that really stands out. And that's important because that part frames the whole eye. So once you've done that, now I do the most important part which is the actual iris. So we're doing a little iris enhance. So cover both of the pupils. And if you ever wanna check that you've covered it, press the O key and that red will come up to show you where you've put your brush. So I'm gonna bring up the exposure I'm gonna bring up the clarity and I'm gonna bring the saturation up quite a bit. This is just kind of to give some more life and vibrance to the eyes. Now, after I've gone and brightened that all up, sometimes I'll go and grab a brush just to put right on the pupil, right on the black part, and just put one little dot there and bring those blacks down again. This will just sort of heighten that contrast between that dark point of the eye and the rest. I have brown eyes, so it's a little bit harder to show the difference, so that's why sometimes I kind of just work on that a little bit. So now onto my favorite part. This is where I actually go into the twinkle of the eye. This is where your eye is catching light and you have those little white spots along the eye. What I like to do is go cover all of them with a brush and then we're gonna enhance them because this is what really makes your eye stand out and gives it some more life. So go ahead and bring up the exposure and the highlights and the whites on that. All right, so now that we've done our edits, let's look at a quick before and after. So here's the before and here's the after. And we did that by just following those three elements. Get the skin color right, retouch your photo, and then focus on the eyes. If you do all of those, you're gonna end up with a really awesome portrait. All right guys, if you like this video, like the video. If you're not subscribed, why aren't you subscribed? Come on, hit subscribe, do it up. All right guys, I will see you in the next video. Have an awesome week, peace out.